today we're talking about movies getting award nominations that haven't even been in the theaters. Hey, John, Brad, Florida here, down here in Florida. Hey, big fan, big fan. Hey, I'm calling about the Golden Globe Awards that just came out. How in the world are movies like Avatar and Babylon on the list when they ain't even been in the theaters yet? I mean, Babylon is going to be a flop in my opinion. But anyway, I'm going to go drink me a Budweiser and take a nap. Thanks, John. Hopefully you haven't taken your nap yet and you're here to <laughs> take a drink of Budweiser. I'm going to end every show with that. Time Until next time, my friends, I'm going to go drink a Budweiser and take a nap. Oh, my so, gosh. Anyway, I am crying. here's the question. They, yeah, God, there I are a lot you. of awards. Like, the Golden Globe nominations came out. Golden Globes are not worth dead weight. I mean, they're useless. Who cares about the Golden Globes? But, you know, Avatar's getting nominations. Babylon's getting nominations. There is a lot of buzz about them getting nominations for the Oscars coming up. And this is a question that comes up every year, and it's understandable why the question comes up every year, because the average film fans see award nominations coming out. Wait a minute, that movie hasn't even come out in theaters yet. Then we got, how is it getting Oscar nominations when it hasn't even come out in theaters yet? And the basic answer to this, although it's a little trickier than this, but the basic answer is this, is that movies that come out before December 31st qualify for this year's Oscars. Now, the Academy, the nominations get announced before the end of the year for a lot of these award ceremonies, right? These award ceremonies announce their nominees before the end of the year, which means that some of these movies haven't even hit theaters yet. The answer is screeners. That these movies, what happens is these studios take these movies like Babylon and not only have early press screenings, but also for certain awards bodies. Like, for instance, Aaron is a voting member of SAG. I think, Chris, you are also yep. a voting member of SAG. Uh, I have uh, friends of ours, somebody who works with us here at the John Campus Show is is uh, Academy, actually voting member of the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Sciences for the Oscars. So these awards bodies, whether they're SAG, the Director's Guild, uh, the Critics' Choice Awards, things like that, these studios will often, if they can't invite them to things, they will send them screeners, digital. The old days, they'd send them a DVD, but that doesn't really happen as much anymore. But Or it'd send them a digital link, and they can see them, and they know that this is eligible. And that is why, even though the film hasn't come out in theaters yet, the people who vote on these things have seen them. And as long as the movie's going to be in theaters before December 31st, they do qualify. Rob, as somebody who has, again, we were talking about this yesterday, you've You've directed feature films with, with William Shatner. You've got a feature film that you're editor and a producer on. Just on Peacock now, ladies and gentlemen, Robert Meyer Burnett's Tango Shalom on Peacock yeah. now. But, you know, when, when it comes time for looking for those awards thing, how would you answer when he says, how are these things getting award nominations when they're not even in theater yet? Well, you know, screeners obviously are an important part of that. And, and different, different like the Producers Guild sends out screeners, the Directors Guild sends out screeners, the WGA, SAG. And they also have curated screenings all over town yes. for the last month and a half where they show the movies that haven't come out yet that'll probably be an awards consideration. I mean, you can go to Warner Brothers and see the entire, like, the director and the crew. Uh, last year, my friend Michelle took me to see, like, Dune. It hadn't opened yet, and there, Denis Villeneuve was there, and the cast was there, and they're answering questions, and they're, they're doing this. It's, you know, it's a dog and pony show for the studios to show these movies, but that's why... The voting bodies of these awards have seen the films via screeners and these screenings. And the screenings do start in November. And, and there's still a bunch of screenings happening now. I mean, they screen these movies not just once, but ongoing. And so people can see them in the best theaters in L.A., which is always a good thing. Chris, uh, again, you were actually one of the on one of the committees for for saying stuff like that. Mm -hmm. How would you explain to somebody when they're asking, how do these movies get these awards when they're not even in theaters? Well, basically, a lot of it does just come down to getting these uh, screeners ahead of time because we get these a few months in advance from everyone else is how this works. We should be getting our discs within the next few weeks. Right? I mean, well, if we even get discs anymore That's at true. all. That's true. Everything's pretty much going digital because mm -hmm. um, for a while you could opt into that. But I now think they're doing it just exclusively that way, which makes more sense anyway, because getting all those Netflix DVDs was real weird. Mm -hmm. um, also, just having DVDs was very weird. I'm sorry. I love you. Um, <laughs> Who has DVDs anymore? That's true. Give me true. 4K. 4K. <laughs> That's not what the union's giving no. me. But yeah, essentially, it's just giving us all time to make sure that we have 
t- ample time to go see everything because especially if you're part of the nominations committee you have to see everything that comes out and so that is not a big window when you're looking at actual theatrical releases so you just need a little extra time to get your butt into your own home and watch some stuff so you can make an educated vote Aaron, when did that transition start to happen from them sending out like physical discs? Because I know when I was still accepting screeners and stuff like that, it like it like the DVDs and discs went away. They became digital. It got really, I don't know if you guys have had this experience. So I don't know if this is like for you with your awards portals, but I remember they would send me like screeners for stuff and it got really irritating because it'd be screening links you could only watch on a laptop. Like they even had built in stuff that you couldn't connect your laptop to a TV so you could watch it on the TV. I literally had to sit there and watch them on a laptop. I'm like, yeah, I'm over this. Don't send me these anymore. Yeah. But but when did that transition start to happen? Which did you prefer as, as a voting member of SAG? Yeah, it started to happen. I would say that um, we started to really see a lot more of the links being sent out maybe uh, as like five years ago, I would say, maybe even a little bit sooner, uh, there were links. And as Robert said, there's tons of really awesome uh, screenings all over town. And if you're a member of any of the unions, you should absolutely take advantage of those because they're not only uh, great opportunities to see them, like he said, in a beautiful theater that is is made the way that it's um, to, to show the movie the way it's supposed to be seen, but also great networking opportunities. I mean, I did The Disaster Artist a few years ago and was invited to a very intimate screening. My mom got to meet James and Dave. Well, I, we didn't talk to James Franco because fuck that guy. But we had a lovely conversation <laughs> with his brother, Dave Franco, um, who is just lovely. And uh, and those those are really great opportunities if you live in Los Angeles and you're a member of one of these unions. But um, yeah, my my dad always loved the DVDs because he would get a nice fat Christmas present. Uh don't report me. Um, but really, the way now that they're doing it is because of the additional expense. And so many people were complaining about the waste that was being created. Um, and especially if there's two actors, I mean, Tom and I would get double DVDs. So we're just DVDs coming out of our ears. Uh, so I actually prefer the links. And they do that, you know, making it to where you can't put it up on a screen, I guess, to try to prevent people from. I don't know what they the, the purpose of inviting that would be. friends over to watch it with you. I, but the I, only reason why that would there's no problem with inviting friends to watch it with you because you could do the same thing with a DVD. Um, the, because it's more about you can't charge people to have screenings of the film. I guess, but yeah. I don't know. Um, but I I personally prefer the links. I think it's it's how people watch shows today. Um, you know, I mean, so I, I think that the the links is definitely the way to go. All right, guys, question is for you. Have you thought about that before? But did, did that make sense about why a lot of movies sometimes, especially around award season, get nominated for these big awards when they haven't even come out in theaters yet? Did we explain it well? Maybe we left something out that you guys know about. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Guys, we want to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. This holiday season, the best deal in wireless can only be found at Mint Mobile. Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile and buy any three-month plan, you get another three months for free. Mint Mobile lets you order and activate from home with eSIM while saving tons on phone plans starting at just $15 a month. You guys know I've been using Mint Mobile long before this holiday deal and I have to say it is the perfect time to switch. I have absolutely loved using Mint Mobile and like I've told you guys many times, I am now spending less than one third of what I used to spend under one of the other major mobile carriers. And now with the whole buy three months, get three months free deal, it's even better. All of their plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily and effortlessly with eSIM. Or if you need a new device, for a limited time, get six months of free service when you buy a select device and plan. So guys, for a limited time, buy any three-month Mint Mobile plan and get three more months for free by going to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's Mint Mobile mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia.